Our last fall when we were looking at this, um, there was a lot of discolored needles on there. Mm. But since then, over the winter, with the wind and everything, a lot of those dead needles have blown off. And now you just kind of have bare crowns. Yeah. I mean, if you look out through there, you can really, you can see that it's a really distinct layer of uh, yeah. dead crown. About two thirds of the crown is dead in there. Like this, I mean, by the time they get over here, you know, this was in there last. Yeah, summer. we're fortunate in most of these stands that we do have a, you know, a naturally developed white pine understory. That's, you know, going to be the next forest. In this past year. We had a very good cone crop on the white pine as well. So we know there's a good seed bank here, as well as these developed pines. So I think we're going to get another flush of regeneration in the next couple of years. I want to talk about here is a, this is a stand that Scott had a harvest in about three or four years ago. Came in and did a thinning, took out about a third of the standing stems, right? A third? Um, he had some white pine regeneration already established in the understory and the purpose of the thinning was to allow more light to get down and reach this regeneration and let that kind of grow along some more and come up and be the next stand. And you can see if you look through there, there he's got quite a nice carpet of green pine established. And so now that we've got this infestation here and we're, we're doing the proper silvicultural term as an overstory removal mm -hmm. because we have regeneration established. We're removing the existing overstory to let that take off. And so what we're doing is we're trying to lay all the trees down carefully in the existing skid trails here from the last harvest to preserve this regeneration and not damage it and let it come through. And we'll have a nice uh, quick jump start on the next stand. We won't have to go in here and replant or anything. It's all natural regeneration established through past silvicultural practices. Um, this, you know, as you know, as we talked about, this red pine stand was planted originally back in the late 30s. Unfortunately, this time we don't have to do that. You know, it was to help uh, minimize the potential for spread of red pine scale throughout the state, and it was also a safety issue because if we let all these trees die, you know, we got all along Deerfield Road here, New Rye Road. If these trees died and they started falling onto the road, you got a big safety issue there. And again, if all these trees die, you got a real issue with fire. These are these are droughty, drier soils, more more prone to fire in this area, and we just couldn't allow to have that much standing dead timber here. Especially near a developed park area, you know, we're not talking about out in the middle of Bear Brook. This is in, you know, roadside and heavily <coughs> recreated area, so it's important that we, you know, we really be aggressive and treat it the way we treat it. And we do, you know, we, as you can see and you, you realize when you come into the park, you go by the toll booth up there, there's a red pine stand right on the right, that's part of this sale as well. One mile trail is behind there, that's part of this stand. And we, we realize that this is going to have a dramatic impact aesthetically when, when people come back this summer to camp. And that's why we tried to get the word out early on. And we, you know, this was done out of necessity. Um, it would be irresponsible if we didn't treat these stands. Yeah. Maybe think of Fern Gully. Yeah. <laughs> to see the white pine come back in because that's that's what naturally grows around here. And it'll be a mix. You see there's some hardwood species growing in here. You get some beech coming in as well and there's a few scattered oaks. And so it won't when, when we're done with this and we come back here in 20 or 30 years and this has grown up and it's 40 feet high, there's gonna be a mix. It's gonna be predominantly white pine, but you'll have some beech in here, some oak. Um, you'll probably get a little hemlock in here. Um, so you won't have that monoculture that you had before, just that one species in here with the red pine. So it'll be a little more beneficial uh, for wildlife having multiple, spe multiple uh, species in here. And probably aesthetically as well, for the average person walking through here, it'll be nice to have a mix of trees as well. I would say within three years, you'll really start seeing the good growth response from the, the regeneration we left behind. Um, initially, when you take the top off, Pine kind of gets, goes into a little bit of a shock, getting all that increased sunlight right, right away. It usually takes it a few years to adapt to that. And then once it becomes adjusted, you'll see an explosion in growth. I've, I've noticed that personally on our jobs, it usually takes about three years 
At that point, you'll probably see those leaders growing anywhere from 12 to 18 inches in height a year, and the caliper will start to expand. You know, the girth of the tree will start to grow pretty fast as well. It's growing as much as uh, half to three quarters of an inch a year. Um, and so, if you come back here, if you look at when you look at this this spring after it's cut, and you see what's out here, if you come back in five years, take a picture now and take a picture then, you'll be amazed at how much these pines have filled out. temperatures and it's all through there. It's in the part of the life cycle where it's uh, immobile, it's attached, and so it's like a tick. If you pull it off, you can't put it on something else. So, I mean, the mouth parts would break and it doesn't have the ability to extract its mouth parts. And so well, that's why we're trying to get this cut before spring when all those mobile crawlers are running around mm -hmm. looking for a place to, to feed. So right now is a really nice, good time to cut. Yeah.